Everyone who knows me knows I'm passionate about chocolate. <laughs> Willie the chocolate man. And I love the real flavours and the way it makes me feel and that natural kick of energy I get off it. At this time of year, people are eating a lot of chocolate. But, you know, it isn't chocolate. It's confectionery. And confectionery is simply something that is sugar and fat with a thin coating of chocolate around it. You know, something went wrong somewhere along the line. They swapped expensive ingredient cacao for sugar. The plan is to try and produce some real chocolate bars in my little chocolate factory at some kind of price point that people can afford. You know, that represents real chocolate. Minimal meddling, maximum flavour. It's only a year since Willie Harcourt Coos risked everything he had to create a business producing the highest quality cacao for use in cooking. Now he's set his sights even higher, taking on the confectionery giants to produce a ready-to-eat chocolate bar. And these are my first bars. It's a bit like having a baby here. <laughs> Once again, he's risking it all, spending money he doesn't have and beginning the daunting task of re-educating the nation's palates. Tensions are high as he and his family get back on the emotional and financial roller coaster. That's my future. That's the future chocolate bar flavour. With all the new equipment he needs, Willie has decided to move to a much larger unit near to his existing factory on an old industrial estate in Tiverton. Now I've committed myself to this building and I'm spending money, I need to produce that dark chocolate as quickly as possible to start selling it to service the debt. I'm looking at 30 grand for this to prep this building. I'm probably looking at four, five hundred grand for all the other kit, for upgrading the roasting side, for the chocolate side. Yeah, it's a lot of debt, and I'm racing, basically, to produce the chocolate bar. Which is all very good, but Willie's committing to spending money he doesn't have. If he's to raise the funding for his new adventure, he needs to persuade someone to lend it to him. Once again, he's meeting his old friend and accountant, David Kirkness. If we go down the route of buying the half million, where do we think we're going to get it from? What are we going to put up against it? And what are the risks? Um, well, we'll put the machines that we buy up. Yep. I don't have a house. Um, and the risks, well, are there's, these, are there's these a... do I have to offer personal guarantees? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't get away with uh, less. I'll stop that. sleeping. Yes, I'll stop sleeping. To put it bluntly, uh, if Willie does go into this next stage, he will be risking everything that he's built up already. Um, you know, anybody that lends money on this basis is going to want personal guarantees for, from him. Uh, therefore, if it fails, it will be everything on the line. Are we going to go for the mega bucks and make all we can? Are we going to go slightly more cautiously so that you get a family life as well? Or... I've thought about this a lot, actually. Family life has been machine-gunned. Mm. Uh, because I'm just not here. But I have said to myself, you know, if I can get this off the ground, you know, it will long-term free me up much more. Um, but, you know, and then I'm also conscious of how many men say that and they find themselves ten years down the line still slogging at it. Yes. I would certainly reinvest the profits back into the business and I think the business will grow. But I don't see that there's a need to take the ultimate risk. But... On the other hand, I can see that that's where the adrenaline gets uh, pumping, and that's why when people don't uh, rely on figures, uh, they rely on the product and they rely on the uh, buzz, if you like, of business, uh, they get wrapped up in it. I think if I were you, I would be pushing ahead, but perhaps a little bit more cautiously than the whole half million. I love that answer. <laughs> <laughs> a true, a true answer. But the hurdles to producing and selling a ready-to-eat chocolate bar are not just practical and financial. Willie's current product, 100% cacao bar for cooking, 
is one of a kind, and so sits alone on the supermarket shelf. Now he's entering one of the most competitive markets in Britain. I'm excited, you know, I think um, where we were before were, you know, I was running on empty to get that first stage. You know, it's much more complex now. Uh, there's many other factors before uh, that weren't involved. There's larger sums of money for a start. Uh, there's more risk. You know, the products I'm making are more complicated. There's a lot more packaging involved. There's all sorts of stuff that, that basically weren't, weren't relevant before. But the biggest new factor is the scale of the enterprise. And so Willie has been out trying to acquire new equipment. First kit, I feel like a little kid, you know. I've got a new motorbike or something. In true Willie style, he's managed to persuade someone to give him two huge chocolate holding tanks. Robert, how old do you reckon they are? From the 60s, I mean, from the 60s? 50 years of chocolate's gone through those. That's history. Each tank basically could have 100,000 50 gram chocolate bars. It's a lot of chocolate. But it's also typical of Willie that he didn't have a tape measure handy when he did the deal. It's only just going to fit. I mean, if. I mean, it doesn't look like it's going to fit. If the barriers to entering a competitive new market aren't hard enough, Willie has also to keep his existing business going. At last, he's hired some help, but with so many decisions to make so quickly, Willie is once again working 18 hours a day. Sometimes Tanya and the family are left behind. Well, I think it was a struggle at the beginning, not having all the information, at, at, you know, from him about what was going on. And there just isn't enough time in the day for him to sit down and explain to me what happened. You know, in one day, much less one week. And then if I miss him for a couple of weeks because something's been particularly busy or he's been, you know, chasing machines in Scotland or he's been to Venezuela, you miss out, you know, huge chunks. So and it's obviously it's his business and he needs to run it the way he wants to run it. Um... And quite often, we, we've uh, fundamentally, we disagree sometimes as to how to do things, which, again, is, I think, probably quite normal. Um, but there is a certain adjustment you have to make when a business takes off like this between you. Otherwise, um, you're in trouble. I don't think Tanya really grasps the, the, the necessity to do it 24-7. I think she thinks she can just take off time. But I, I think we're at a crucial point here where we've got an idea... We want to take it forward. You know, we need... There's, there's a multiple of factors that are either going to make it go forward or not, and, and I've got to get it right. It's not a case, you know, of taking time out. It's not like the factory's up and running. Hey, I'll take the weekend off and making chocolate. The factory's not built. 